to Mick Hood. Mick is the UK Director of Liberty Steel and he's kindly offered to speak to us today about what it's like starting out in the world of work and some insider information about recruiting within this field. So welcome Mick, thank you for coming along. Thank you. Could you start, you start by telling us a little bit about your role and how long you've been with Liberty Steel please? Okay, um, I've been in the steel sector now, this is my 42nd year. Um, and I started as a technical apprentice in 1979, um, which was metallurgy, material science, um, and went into a number of operational roles uh, and decided actually that I liked working with people rather than maybe things. So therefore I was asked if I was interested in joining human resources about 20 years ago. I said yes, and after a number of jobs across the UK and Europe, I find myself really as the HR director for Liberty Steel in the UK, a relatively new group of businesses have been put together. So it's been quite a long journey, but I find myself here and it is really all about my interest in people, people development and people being kind of the best version of themselves that I'm really interested. That's what gets me out of bed in the morning, really. Fantastic. What a great varied career. <laughs> so what type of roles do you normally recruit young people into? OK, so I mean, right across the board, because of the nature of our organisation, we put a special focus into engineering and material science. They're the, the, the two kind of um, consistent uh, and, and skill sets that we absolutely need because we're a technical organization and, and we have lots of machinery and kit that needs kind of mending and, and bringing up to date. So engineering is, is, is key as well and technical skills, electrical skills. So that's where our uh, core approach is and we, we, we run the uh, apprenticeship programs for both those skills. But we do take on apprentices in the functions in finance and HR and um, um, procurement, etc. Uh, we do do that, but our focus is engineering and material science. So you mentored apprentice apprenticeships there. Um, what's a degree apprenticeship? Okay, I mean it's quite an interesting question that because at the end of the day, the way that we actually formulate our apprenticeship pathways, so somebody starts at 16 or 17 or 18, <clears throat> generally, and they can start at later dates, but they're, they're, they're where they tend to start. We've got a pathway so that people can actually get to the uh, apprenticeship level that's needed after three years generally. But then the way it works is um, the academic route we take means that they can continue and they can continue right through to degree um, postgraduate um, qualifications from that early platform of just starting as apprentice with five O levels um, is, where, is, where, is the kind of bar that we set. <clears throat> or we can actually bring somebody in straight from A level and, and set them off slightly later in the pathway so they're on a degree route straight away if that makes any any kind of sense so I think there's a misnomer you can there are pathways that exist now where where people can come on them um, right straight from school and then they can go as long as they want or or the minimum which is the apprenticeship certificate which generally takes three years so that's fundamentally different when people talk about the apprenticeship degree route they're generally talking about some new starts that little bit later than a, their 16, 17. So we put them um, somewhere because they've generally already got A-levels, for example. So they, it gives them a, a start. So that's um, what degree apprenticeships are really about. So there's quite a lot of options then. You don't necessarily have to decide straight away what you want to no, do. No, that's absolutely right. And, and, and the other thing as well is, and people use this expression a lot, you're genuinely giving people, because vocational qualifications are often kind of um, <clears throat> poo-pooed. It's hard. It's hard to get an engineering qualification at, at, uh, at the different levels. So, um, yeah, the degree, some of it, they, at the same time as they gain in that degree qualification, they've obviously got many years of experience building up at the same time, which turns them into the um, talent that we need for our businesses. Fantastic. Um, so I guess when you are recruiting someone into something like a graduate or an apprenticeship position, what are the key things that you look for in those individuals? Yeah, OK, so we do create a bar, um, five all over all levels, including English and Maths at C or above. But when you say O level, sorry, is that GCSE? GCSE, sorry, old, C, uh, old <laughs> language, kind of old language. Um, um, uh, but what I would say is that there's lots and lots of people that apply that reach that, that have got that bar. You know, there's lots and lots of well qualified young men and women who apply for these roles. But the other part of, of, of the recruitment process is, is we put them in, um, it's been difficult in COVID, we put them in different environments to test the team working skills, the leadership skills, the listening skills, 
their approach to the, the fellow um, potential apprentices. So it's not just the uh, academic bar that we're looking for. We're looking at people who are team players, who are particular, who listen and when to lead. And it's um, it's great to see different, you know, people. some people who kind of are really, really bright, maybe, who struggle with some of that a little bit more and other people who are kind of, you know, at a different level, but they've got lots of skills. So it's a balancing act between um, that academic attainment and uh, that well-rounded individual that we're looking for um, to take up a role in, in, in Liberty. Fabulous. Again, lots of options, lots of different pathways, I guess, for, for young people, depending on what's going to suit them best. Yeah. Um, so when, when you're interviewing um, a candidate, how important is it to you that that candidate would have relevant work experience? Um, we look for it. Uh, so it's not it's not an you know it's not a case of you can't get the role if you've not got relevant work experience from an apprenticeship point of view. Are we talking an apprenticeship point of view now, Poppy? Yeah. I guess both. Why don't we look at both? So first, we'll look at both then. Yeah, yeah. So it's always good to see on a CV somebody that's kind of experienced the world more than just a um, a college or a university classroom. So we we are looking for that more rounded individual, um, which only comes with what I would call external experiences. Yeah, it could be backpacking around Europe. It could be a part-time job that they've done while they've been at uni. There's no real absolute recipe that's perfect because then you're looking for how that's impacted on them. So when you interview them, you'll bring that into the conversation and, and you like to see some of that, you know, the experience that they've had, you know, the, the human interactions that they've suddenly had that they've maybe not had before. We're looking for that kind of um, um, experience that they'll, they'll bring with them so it doesn't really matter but we do look for it but it doesn't mean that uh, it precludes people who've not not done that but I think most young men and women are looking for that as well anyway they want to do something else while they're at university and that often involves part-time job travel voluntary work lots of different stuff interaction within the unit being parts of clubs or or it all kind of helps I think that rounded creating that rounded individual that we that we all, I guess, aspire to be. Mm. Guess, so if they've, um, you touched on volunteering there, that could be a really good example. If they've, you know, if you've got some young people that have volunteered in their spare time, but it's not directly related to the field of work that they want to go in, do you think chatting about something like that in an interview is interesting for the company? Yeah, I mean, the first thing I do is challenge that, Poppy. I think, I think, the indirect direct relevance it, it suggests that meeting people interacting with other people is not relevant in any job and i think it is so i think any any experience beyond <clears throat> your technical um, chosen subject is experience that's going to help you with that because most people need to influence in the in the careers they need to listen well they need to understand somebody else's point of view they need to corral ideas all, they're all life skills that are learned through life, through experience, through different different kind of interactions. So, yes, I understand the question, but I, I would challenge you back and say any relevance that gives you that rounded individual on top of the functional skills, ultimately the the kind of that's the kind of capability that me, that, that that means an individual will kind of um, move on and move up and and and, and have more choices because it's not all about your your functional expertise. Important as that is. Right. Um, and does it matter if the young person that you're interviewing doesn't really know that much about the job role or, or the company that they're applying for? Um, I would say if you were applying for a job for a company, I would expect you to do a little bit of research into the job that you or the company that you're looking to work for um, as a minimum to just walk, walk into an interview and not have done any reading or research or a background on on the on the company would be um, would I, I think be a mistake on the part of the potential candidate. So yeah, in terms of um, absolute knowledge of their own um, discipline, say engineering, I um, uh, expect them to understand uh, the qualification engineering is the qualification engineering. So you accept that as a as a red. Would I expect them to understand how engineering worked in Liberty? To any level of detail i think that will be too much to ask well that's where we come in in terms of training them and developing them to, to to get that experience and understanding so if they've passed the bar in terms of the the, the degree or the the qualification that they're taking you take that as red so um but in terms of company knowledge background a bit of research yes absolute detail on the function that they're looking to get into 
not as much. And when we say um, for young people to research the company that they're interviewing with, where do you think would be a good place to start for something like that? The company website or perhaps mm -hmm. LinkedIn profiles of people that work there? Oh, I think a really good place to start for most things is Google or a search engine and just bang Liberty in, um, whether it's Steel or, or GFG, uh, and you will get loads and loads of information about uh, the company, how it's growing, the components of it, um, the different sectors it, it works in. It's not, it's not difficult to get some decent high level research done in half an hour if you just use a decent search engine. Yes, there are in, intranet and internet sites that it's internet sites that they would be able to access. Um, but you know, there's that much information out there now. Um, but anybody that's kind of will put a little bit of time and effort and can get the right information out about most things to be able to show that they've shown some interest and they've done some some research. Yeah. Not, that's why I think it's a negative if they've not done anything because it's so easy to do these days, I think, compared to what it used to be like. Absolutely. And you don't need to memorise everything that you read, just enough to demonstrate a good understanding of the company and their values that they're looking for. What I'm looking for really are people that have got a level of passion for what they want to do. So I've had everything from young apprentices, I mean, not, not necessarily me, but the people that kind of I work with, I've had apprentices who walked into the interview with the project they've done or, <laughs> or, or the bike uh, that they've kind of put together at home or, you know, a lot of these young men and women are really passionate about what they do to the point where they're doing it from an early age, whether it's mending bikes or or tinkering around with machinery or or involved in re a bit of R&D, a project uh, uh, maybe through their education that's shown that their interest. You know, the ones that get on the best tend to be interested and passionate in their own careers, whatever that might be. Great, thank you. Do you think you could give us an example of a typical question that you might ask a candidate in an interview? So perhaps maybe one that you would give to um, a recent graduate and maybe to an apprentice as well? To the one that stumps them the more than another, which I'm letting the secret out now, aren't I? Um, <laughs> is, is I believe, and I think most people believe, and the science tells you this, that some of the best and the most successful people in the world, they've made mistakes. All right, so I often ask people, what's the biggest mistake? Obviously, not not getting too personal, but from a from a um, I don't know a decision making process that regards their education or a job that they might have um, been in, or what's your biggest mistake? What's the what's the thing that you thought got got wrong? And you tend to find that people that have done stuff have made them, and they remember them, and therefore they can retell them. And I think if you can get people who can understand that they they can be wrong as often as they can be right. Um, but the way that they test that with other people, sounding boards or research or or just self-reflection, you know, these kinds of skills are valuable in, in, in the world we live in now, that you understand that there's a journey that you're on as an individual, you actually become that better version of yourself, as I call it, and that is often through kind of messing up, so <laughs> to speak. Yeah, and I like to, so a question I would ask is, give me an example of where that's happened, what you learned from it, what, what's your what's your view on that mistake and, and, and etc that's one of my kind of favorite questions to ask because you get the real person coming back at you then I think I think that's really interesting as well I, I don't think that many people would be prepared for that in an interview they'd be prepared to sing about all the wonderful things that they've done but I think self-reflection and talking about you know challenges you face and how you've overcome those that can be really interesting as well yeah I think I think that's where I come from but unfortunately now the secret's out, Poppy. <laughs> Don't worry, no one listening will tell, I promise. Okay, good. Um, so what's the funniest thing that anyone has ever said to you in an interview? Did they get the job? Right. I, it's not what they said, it was what they did. I <laughs> once had an interview for a job, and this was a graduate interviewing for a job, who couldn't help but giggle all the way through the interview. Um, and I didn't really understand why. And it was not really appropriate to ask the individual why they were giggling. They just kept giggling. It could have been nervous giggling. Uh, and maybe I, when I look back, um, I should have maybe said, approached it more directly. But you know, in that field, when there's lots of people competing for a job and an individual is so unprepared um, in, in a meeting where they just end up giggling the way through it, which is what happened. They didn't get the job. I wasn't angry. I didn't get angry. And it wasn't kind of they weren't laughing out loud, but they were kind of giggling. I thought this is really strange and weird. So 
I don't know whether that individual was not prepared for that level of interview or whether there was a problem I'd not. But I, I suppose what, the, what I'm going to trying to say is employers don't always have the time or patience to get beneath some. So if there is something going off there that I wasn't aware of, but it wasn't a, a strange interview, it was a really strange interview. The individual just kept giggling. So that's probably the, the funniest. It was funny, but um, <laughs> at the same time, kind of not, if that makes any sense. And no, they didn't get the job. Oh, maybe next time. <laughs> maybe next time, yeah, maybe next time. Um, yeah. And finally, what is a key piece of advice that you would give to a young person before they went, maybe for their first interview or maybe for their first interview um, in a field that they're really excited about or really passionate about? What's something that you would want to pass on as a pearl of wisdom? Okay, I think I'd want to go back a little bit. Um, and I, and I, all right, I'm a little bit biased, um, but I've been involved in this for, for, for years and years and years. Um, most businesses or many organizations run what I would call preschool interaction with schools. So we, we run something called Industrial Cadets in Liberty, but we've had many, many years of, of, of that kind of approach. I think if young people can, can get that opportunity to get involved in something like that, before they actually come into the workplace. It's almost like a, a, a window into the workplace before you've actually got there. Because I don't care what anybody says, if you spend most of your time in the classroom and not worked, then getting involved in something like that is, is to me, going to give you, you know, we keep talking about the rounded individual. They're going to give you that kind of, that's going to give you that kind of benefit that you've engaged with. Because something like industrial cadets and, and similar kind of programs to that means that a young person between the ages of, well, right down to a young age, but you know, that sweet spot of 13, 14, where people start to think about what they want to do, they're suddenly interacting with maybe not me, but people like me, who they, you know, they, they can see then kind of what what it means to be working with. I've got to be careful not being disrespectful towards people, but. The workplace and, and 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 the people that work is a different environment than 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 education um, and maybe even than part time work. I don't know. So those kind of programs that were my pearl of wisdom. If you can get access to something like that or any work experience of any nature, then I would try. Beyond that, in terms of real direct stuff, in terms of the interview, I would say that most interviewers and most people that are looking to take people on, they're looking for. Um, they're looking for people to work in the organisation who've got, um, I would say, a grown-up approach to work. You know, okay. turn up to work on time. You know, work work hard while while you're here. Kind of, there's a two-way kind of thing going off here, where yes, the employer's got a responsibility to look after you from a safety point of view, develop you as an individual. Uh, you've got a responsibility to kind of be like be the best version you can and it might not be in the first role but you definitely have got to get to that place so i would say when you're interviewing if people can somehow get that kind of thing across to employers in you know, the maturity the grown upness all that kind of stuff and a bit of fun of course we want a bit of fun but um but you know that that maturity piece um and it's relative i know that um is something that most employers are kind of looking for i think does that make sense, Poppy? Yeah. It does, absolutely. Well, Mick, thank you so much. That's been really interesting and definitely very helpful, I think, to get us all prepared for whatever comes next. So thank you very much for your time. Really appreciate it. Thank you, Poppy. Thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.